Hey, want to take a short look today at a great campfire sing-along tune, Puff the Magic Dragon. Also, a great song for kids. I love to teach first graders, kindergartners, second, third. I sang this all the way up to fifth grade with my kids, I think. And it's, um, it's got a couple difficult things in it. It mostly has some quick changes to B minor. That's, the, that's about the only thing that takes it out of the one to two range in terms of chords. Um, I will later on have a finger-picking arrangement of it, kind of like what you just heard right there. But for today's version, we're going to work on just strumming through the chords, singing the song, and you can do this lots of different ways. Um, a pick might be a great way to do it using kind of the country strum. Hitting a bass note on the first and third beats, and then just down on the second beat, and maybe up, down, up on the third, third and fourth beats. I'm doing it right there with a little bit of swing. You could do it without it. Either way, if you do it with the swing, it'll sound like this. So, kind of up to you, but just make sure that you understand the difference between playing it in straight time where the downs and the ups are equal, or in swing time, where the ups are slightly delayed, one and two and three and four. Now the chord progression is really basic. It uses five, a couple of chords, five main chords in the key of G, and then a secondary dominant, a chord borrowed from the key of D, to get you to D sometimes. So we don't need to go too much into the theory of that right now, but the chords are G to B minor, chord three in the key of G, to C, and then G. And the fingering I like for all those is kind of the standard fingerings with G, second, third, and fourth fingers. B minor is a bar at the second, and then your three fingers in the shape of an A minor chord. C, pretty standard fingering for C. And uh, what else? We have Ds, played with first, second, and thirds, sometimes D7s. And in this song, the Ds and the D7s are all pretty interchangeable. In the music, I've got it as D a couple of times, D once. D twice, I guess, and D7 for the little turnaround bounce at the end. But completely optional, doesn't matter. D or D7 are interchangeable in this song. Again, that's because we're in the key of G, and that's chord number five. Um, then we have an E minor, and I really like fingering E minor with second and third fingers, not first and second. Part of it is to be consistent with the other E chords you're going to be playing. Now, you don't usually use E and E major, E minor and E major next to each other. Happens sometimes, but that's not really the real reason. It's more to have more options to do with other stuff around the, around the chord at times. So, uh, E minor, and then that also makes the change to A7, which is our, the chord that's outside of the key, borrowed from the key of D, a nice easy change because I like to have the A7 played with second and third fingers. Second finger on the fourth string, third finger on the second string. So, just running through those chords, then we have G, B minor, C, Back to G, second line to C, then a half measure change from G to E minor. So if we're hitting bass notes, that'd be this. Bass down, and then a new bass note for the E minor on beat three, and another down, or down up, or up, down up. Campfire, strumming doesn't matter. Could even do the whole thing without bass notes. Could even do the whole thing finger picking the standard kind of Travis picking pattern. Now, if you've got a lot of people singing around campfire for this one, the finger picking doesn't usually lend itself as well because you gotta, the guitar's gotta be loud and clear and really driving the beat. Kind of a, a, uh, an important part of campfire songs. So anyhow, the, the first line, the second line then continues from the E minor to A7 for a whole measure and D. This is a good place to not really use the D7. Um, so that's why I have, have D there, but, but again, it's okay. Uh, third line, same as the first. This is a very typical uh, chord progression where the first half of it is almost like the second half, except the first half ends on D, the dominant chord, chord five, and the second half ends on G, gets back to one. So our fourth line starts off the same way as the second, G to E minor, quick change, to A7, D7, G. And we can 
hit the D7 as kind of the turnaround, the chord that's going to bring us back to the beginning. Let's run through the whole thing. I'll sing a chorus. Now, another interesting thing about this song. The chorus is the series of words, Puff the Magic Dragon, Live by the Sea, and Frolicked in the Autumn Mist in a Land Called Hanali, done twice. That's a chorus. Now, the very first verse, though, uses the first two lines of that to introduce the song. So the first verse is Puff the Magic Dragon, Live by the Sea, and Frolicked in the Autumn Mist in a Land Called Hanali, Little Jackie Paper, and then you finish that line. Love that rascal puff, blah, blah, blah. You got the idea. Um, then you sing the first chorus, which is two sets of the puff thing. Then you're going to do the second verse. Together they would travel. After the second verse, come back and do the chorus again, the two sets of puff. You with me? Okay. Uh, then the third and fourth verses pretty much go together without another chorus to save the chorus for the end. Uh, here we go. I'm going to do the first verse and a chorus. A couple measures of G as an intro. Puff the magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. Then the little Jackie paper. So there's our second or the end of the first verse, okay? Brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. Now the chorus. The magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. Same words, puff. The magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. So just a slightly different melody there at the end to tie it all up and get back to our G chord. At the very end of the song, you stretch that out. Frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. So there you go. The rest of the words, to get the timing of it, you should really pick up one of the neat, well, there's dozens of great recordings. Of course, the original was by on a Peter, Paul, and Mary album because it was, of course, written by Peter, Peter Yarrow of Peter, Paul, and Mary. And uh, so their version was kind of the first one, but a lot of people did have done it over the years. So uh, that's it for Puff. I will be getting to this version for our target members somewhere down the line. So anyway. We'll have a nice little finger-picking version of this song if we don't already. Depends on when you're seeing this. That's it for Puff. Have fun with it.